Hi, welcome back to Physics 1.4 KSSM. Today we continue Chapter 5 Waves on Topic 5.3 Reflection of Waves. What is meant by reflection of waves? You observe the, op the picture given above. This picture shows seawater wave bounce back when hit a retention wall of big rock. You can observe an image form in the blind corner mirror due to the light wave that bounce back. Or this person can hear an echo when sound wave hit a hard surface and bounce back. Or you can observe an image on the smooth surface or water surface due to the light wave that bounce back. So what is the meaning of reflection of waves? So we can define as wave bounce back as the wave strike a reflector or obstacle. The word, the word bounce back same situation as when you throw a tennis ball when the ball hits the wall and suddenly bounce back. So same thing happened to wave, it bounce back as it strike a reflector. So before we discuss further, we look at what is definition for wave front. It is defined as line that joins all points which are in phase in a wave. We look at this diagram. Let's say we use a vibrator, plane vibrator, so it will produce a wave. Point A, B, C, and D are crest point. So the meaning of word in phase is the molecules or medium are moving in the same direction and with the same displacement. So A and B at crest part, meaning A and B are in phase. So when you draw lines to join A and B, the red color broken line, so this line is known as wavefront for crest. Same thing if you join C and D, which is also in phase. So this line, we call it wavefront for crest. Or you can also join another point like trough points. Trough points are also in phase. So you draw a line, a broken black line. So this line is known as wavefront for trough. So if you observe a pattern that form on the white screen below the, below the ripple tank, you will observe a bright and dark fringes alternately. So when we use a ripple tank to study wave motion or wave phenomenon, so what we have here, there is a motor that connected to a vibrator, which is also connected to power supply, and we also need a lamp. We put some water into the tank. When we turn on the switch, we can observe the pattern form on the screen. How can the pattern of dark and bright fringes form? So we can discuss in this situation. So when the vibrator vibrates, it will create a surface of water in form of like this which is trough, crest, trough, crest, trough, and so on. The light ray from the lamps, when passed through the crest part, it will act like a convex lens. It will cause the light ray to converge to one point. So when light ray converge here, meaning high intensity of light here, so it will produce bright fringe. For the trough part, it acts like a concave shape of lens, so the light ray will diverge. When diverge, it will form a low intensity of light here, thus produce dark fringe. So you can see there's a formation of bright and dark fringes alternately that you can observe on the screen of the ripple tank. Okay. So you must be able to explain uh, how the pattern is formed uh, by using this diagram. You can draw this diagram to explain uh, how the formation of the bright and dark fringes for the ripple tank. Okay, now there are two types of dippers that can be used. We want to produce plane wave, you can use plane dipper. So you can see a straight wavefront producer on the screen. There's a bright and dark fringes. Okay, same thing when we use a spherical dipper, it will produce circular wave. You can see the circular shape of wavefront produced. So if you still remember we discussed before, the bright one represents the wavefront for crest, the dark one represents wavefront for trough. If you want to sketch the pattern of the plane wavefront, we draw the purple color line 
with arrow as a direction. Then we can draw the blue lines, maybe a few lines here to represent the wavefront. Remember, wavefront and direction always 90 degrees to each other. Okay, and the distance between two consecutive wavefronts we mark as a lambda or wavelength. That's why here the distance between two consecutive wavefronts must be uniform. If you draw here 1 cm, means all must be 1 cm. So this is the plane wavefront. Same thing for the circular wavefront. Direction is outwards from this point. This is the point where the, uh, the source of wave uh, is produced. So the wavefront we draw is circle shape or circular wave. Distance between two consecutive wavefront we mark as lambda. Okay, and this one is uniform. Okay, so this one we call it circular wavefront. So the phenomenon of reflected wave only cause the wave direction to change, while other characteristic of wave do not change. When we discuss about characteristic, meaning we discuss about speed, wavelength, and frequency. So for reflection phenomenon, there is no change in speed, wavelength, and frequency. The only, the only one characteristic that change is direction. Let's say we <coughs> carry out one activity to observe huh, reflection phenomenon by using a ripple tank. So when you turn on the switch, you can observe a pattern form on the screen. To make it clear, we can use a stroboscope, which can freeze the pattern so that you can observe a pattern like this. Okay, the wave that uh, travel and incident towards the, the reflector before it hit the reflector, we call it incident wave. And the one that bounce back, we call it reflected wave. So you can see the wave front here. Okay, uh, the, so the pattern of the wave front that you observe on the screen showing that direction is already changed. Okay, this is what you observe actually. This is the incident wave. When hit a reflector, it bounces back. So you observe here is the wave front eh, for the incident wave and wave front for the reflected wave. Okay, let's say you want to draw a reflected wave pattern. This is the reflector. We can put in this position. Okay, you can put a vertical or horizontal, depends on the situation. Let's say we put in this position. Okay, now we have incident wave. Okay, for the incident wave, we draw a few lines to represent the wave front. Remember, wave front and direction always 90 degrees to each other. And the distance between two consecutive wave fronts must be uniform. If you set as 1 cm, meaning all are 1 cm. Okay, so this whole thing we call it incident wave. So the incident wave incident at this point. So what we do at this point, we draw a normal line. Normal line is 90 degrees to reflector. Okay, what happened to the incident wave? Once hits a reflector, it will bounce back. So let's say this is the direction. So this one we call it reflected wave. Okay, you draw a few lines to represent the wave front eh, for the reflected wave. So this whole thing we call it reflected wave. What else we can observe from the diagram? Okay, angle between incident wave and normal line. Angle between normal line and reflected wave. What is the name given? So the angle between incident wave and normal line, we put it as I or known as angle of incidence. Angle between normal and reflection, reflect, uh, reflected wave, we mark as R. So this one is angle of reflection. So based on the law of reflection, angle I is equals to angle R. Okay, I equals to R. So that one we call it law of reflection. Okay, so this is the reflected wave pattern. So you can mark uh, or label this one incident wave, normal line, okay, uh, reflected wave, okay, angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Okay. So the effects of reflection on characteristic of the wave, speed, wavelength, and frequency. So the first one we discuss about angle. So angle of incidence equals to angle of reflection. When we discuss about wavelength, frequency, and speed, no change. Okay. What is change is direction of propagation. 
So changes with the condition that angle of incident is the same as angle of reflection. Okay. Application, we can discuss about the first one, the uses of ultrasonic waves, the sound wave, high frequency sound wave, to examine a fetus or other internal organs, for example, ultrasound. So ultrasound, when transmit, it will be it will be reflected when heat, for example, the bone parts of the fetus. So it will bounce back. When bounce back, it will create image eh, on the screen of the ultrasound device. Or another one used to detect shoal of fish eh, for the fishermen to map the seabed to detect depth of seabed. So they want to be, we use sauna, eh, sauna system. Okay. So you get the diagram here. So you can... Uh, you can uh, search in the internet uh, for more diagrams or videos on this. Uh, it's very interesting. Okay, another one is the radio wave from the communication satellite are reflected by parabolic dish and focus onto the antenna on the feed horn. Okay, this one like your astro uh, dish uh, at the rooftop. Uh, you can observe the shape actually is concave shape. Uh, very big dish, large diameter. So what we put here is the receiver is placed at the focus point of the concave shape dish so what happened that when the signal coming eh, uh, in a parallel direction it will converge to focus point of the antenna uh, of the dish so you know just now we put the receiver at the focus point meaning the receiver will receive maximum signal so when maximum signal received you can uh, hear a very loud sound have a clear sound and also clear image yeah, when you watch tv okay so solve problem there's a calculation problem involving reflected wave okay, given ultrasonic wave frequency 25 kilohertz transmitted from ship to the seabed to determine the depth of the sea this wave travel a speed of 1500 meter per second in the water Time between sending the ultrasonic wave and receive, receiving the reflected wave is 120 milliseconds. Determine depth of C, ultrasonic wavelength. Solution. Okay, given speed of wave V equals to 1500 meter per second. Time interval T, 120 milliseconds. Here is the, the unit using is milli. So you need to convert to second. Okay, A, we want to determine depth of C. So depth of C, we can put as distance travel equals speed multiplied by time. So for the time taken, 120 millisecond, is for the, for the ultrasonic wave to travel to and fro, eh? to and fro, two way. That's why we put here as 2D. For this T time taken, so distance travel is two way, 2D. So 2D equals VT. So depth D equals to VT divided by 2. Okay, so we substitute all the values. Remember the time taken given in millisecond, you convert to second. So you get 90 meter. So this is the depth of the C. Okay, B ultrasonic wavelength, you want to determine what is lambda. So V equals to F lambda. V is given 1500. Frequency given the unit is kilohertz. So you need to convert to hertz. Kilo is 1000. Or 10 power 3 yeah? so you solve this one you will get lambda equals 0 0.06 meter so this one is one uh, question involving the reflected wave yeah? okay that's all for this topic so don't forget to like tap and subscribe for more incoming videos okay good luck bye